Greetings all, Zex here again for another entry in my 13 Slays of Halloween. <sighs> You'll have to excuse me, I'm still a little bit under the weather. It's kind of why this year's entries are a little bit later than usual. I got a little bit of a bug, and so it kind of made me stall. So I've been trying to, I thought first to cancel this, but then it got somewhat better. Cough drops help. That does help so much. So my throat's a little bit better, so I don't sound like a freaking, uh, I don't sound like Christopher Walken or something, or the guy from this movie. Uh, speaking of which, my first movie this year is The Graveyard Shift. Uh, it stars uh, the guy from Cherry 2000, a.k.a. also the guy from Man and Machine, David Andrews. Yeah, that's the guy's name. Really, he he's decent, but the, the real stars of this movie are the rats. And uh, Brad Dorff as the Vietnam exterminator. Uh, <laughs> I remember I saw this movie a while back on AMC's uh, Orthon. I always try to catch it, and I never could get all of it. But at the moment I saw Brad Dorff do this monologue about rats and about this Vietnam thing, where basically you just have to see it to believe it. It's a monologue that's just so like, holy shit! I mean, Dorff just delivers it with some gravitas. And Dorf's really pushed on one of the one reasons to see this movie. And the other reason is uh, the corrupt uh, manager of the uh, mill. And that's played by the guy from the Monster Squad, the father from the Monster Squad. It's like a, a total, total shift from these two movies. You have a good, he plays a good, <laughs> good guy in that one. And this one, he is a rat bastard. Literally, he is a rat bastard. I mean, there's a great, some great scenes in here. He gets a lot of good killer lines. Him and Dorf just have the best lines in the movie, where basically uh, these guys are mocking him, and basically all of a sudden he slayers through the <laughs> background. Like, oh, you guys, that's imitation got there. His accent this is, this is hilarious and good. He, the payoff to his finale is great, too. I mean, he really likes the movie. Uh, but I mean, the other thing is that you could tell who was gonna die in this very quickly. <laughs> Almost a lot of people had their red shirts. Well, there's there a couple kills that did surprise me, but uh, I was like expecting, okay, why are you still alive? Oh my god, they killed you off early. early? Oh my god. So there is that. But I mean, this is not. It threw me some, through some loops, and seeing this movie fully instead of just bits and pieces, it finally gets the whole story down. I mean. I'm not much of a Stephen King movie fan. I mean, to do much be told, I saw the worst ones. I mean, this was like the string of Stephen King movies like in the 90s that they made that were pretty much shit for the most part. I mean, I'm not a fan of The Night Flyer. I'm not a fan of Dinner. And I'm not a fan of, I want to say the one they made in the freaking 90s. I just thought there was another one that wasn't Shawshank Redemption. Uh, but, uh, that's not sure. What's this film? I can't forget. I, I'm not. I mean, it's a good movie to watch, but I mean, it's just. Bleh. But anyway, the horror-wise for Stephen King, I mean, bleh. can you compare? I mean, also Cujo. I mean, Cujo has some good moments, but it's just like, okay, these are some really rap bastards. Do really deserve it, for the most part. But uh, I'm going off to there. there. Uh, Oh yeah, and there's also the Stephen King's glorious movie of <laughs> he did himself, where <laughs> him and Emilio Estevez and Pat Hingle fight machines that turn against man thanks to a meteorite. Oh god, what was that movie? God damn, god now. That's what happens when you have freaking Nightquill and you're like, Bleh. also Dayquill. Instead of liquor dump sex, you get drunk dump sex because I'm on freaking all this stuff. To get the thing's done. See, that's how much. I how much willpower I am. I am willing myself to do this. So you can see my pain and misery as I go through this. I've already drugged up the hell. And I can't even have booze yet. That sucks. But anyway, this movie was pretty good. Uh, I have to say, really the best part of the movie isn't really... I mean, the, I mean, the performances are good from Doroth and then also the gore effects and some little bit side characters. Even you have the guy from the Wishmaster series, the Dijin, uh What was the guy's name? He's a very... Eastern European na uh, name, but uh, he played in the Wishmaster series. He was also in a uh, 
Mr. He was a terrorist in a couple action movies too. Andrea Divalkov? Jarvalkov? I just know he's from Wishmaster. He played the Jujin in the first two movies. Uh, he's in here. He plays a good character who pretty much is, you know, his, his fodder. And you're waiting for him to be his end. And it, yeah, it, it, it's good. But yeah, it's the guy who plays the, the Monster Squad, who plays the uh, mill owner in this, he is just so greasy. And just so, he's the reason why to watch this. Him and Brad Dorf. But the third reason to watch this is that unlike other movies, like, this kind of took me off surprise. It's the reason why I like this movie to begin with, is that at the end of the movie, there's a song that plays basically all the quotes, and it is the most addictive song. Once you start hearing it, it is, <laughs> it just gets in your head because it just plays close to the movie, and it, it's a little catchy beat. I'm just gonna play a clip now, but I did that on this. I mean, it's an interesting thing. <coughs> it's an interesting thing, and I'll just say that's reason enough, and. That's all about my review that the show is shows over. over. So far, so juicy. Damn! The graveyard. Oh my God, this is bad. Wow! Eat the fight! Raw American. I mean, listen to that. I'm gonna put the link in the uh, thing, but you listen to that, you're like. What the fuck? And it's that good of a freaking song. I mean, it really gets in your head. That's really the other highlight of the movie. It's like, you're like, oh, fuck. And all of a sudden, like, yeah, and then basically, you get that. It's like a little curveball they give you, and it's like, it's a good curveball. It's like something you can only expect from the 90s. I mean, you had the Maniac Cop, right? <laughs> Maniac Cop 2, and you have this one up there. So, yeah, this is a curious movie. I just wanted to see this. The one I saw this was on Bluetooth. I was like, I have to buy this movie. It's on sale. I have no excuses anymore. I have to watch the entire movie now. And I figured this would be the movie to watch. So that's the end review. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun review. That's, that's what it is. It's not something to fully own. This is something to fully appreciate. That's a movie that if you are just got an hour and a half to kill and you just want something to pass the time and just enjoy watching some pastors get what they deserve. This is one of those type of movies to watch, and it's a fun movie to watch. But, uh, surprisingly, I wonder how much of Stephen King is in there. Because <laughs> this feels something like totally not what he would fully do, but it's still a fun movie. I mean, like I said, Brad Dorff, the guy who plays the, man, uh, the middle manager, he is great. But the icing on cake is the freaking sense on this. So, yeah, I'm going to put this in the link in my article, and, uh, see you next time, which is only probably a few minutes for me, because I'll be doing the next article. But, See you soon.